Hi, David Rosenberg here for the Psychopharmacology Institute. In this CAP, or Child and Adolescent Psychiatry Smart Take, we'll examine psychotropic medication prescriptions during the COVID-19 pandemic among U.S. children and adolescents receiving mental health services. Even in the pandemic's aftermath, we're still feeling the impact and fallout from a nearly three-year pandemic. Global lockdown, social distancing and isolation, extended school closures resulting in virtual learning resulted in a new normal. Behaviors that once would have been considered to be OCD became the new normal. We wore masks everywhere. We used sanitizer as much as possible. Is it any wonder psychiatric sequelae exploded in children, adolescents, and young adults with unprecedented levels of depression and anxiety in high school and college students? In this study, the authors examined monthly prescribing trends of psychotropic medications in nearly 8,900 privately insured youth living in the United States, 2 to 17 years of age. So what did they find? Well, psychotropic prescriptions increased dramatically shortly after the onset of the pandemic and nationwide lockdowns in April 2020, and then gradually decreased in the months following through September 2020. The increase in prescriptions in 2020 compared to 2019 was greatest for antidepressants, antipsychotics, and mood stabilizers. But listen to this. Antidepressant and antipsychotic prescriptions remain significantly higher in September 2020 relative to September 2019, so that their increase after the pandemic did not return to baseline. Antidepressant and antipsychotic prescription was similar in children 6 to 17 years of age, underscoring an especially striking impact on elementary, middle school, and high school students. Increased antidepressant and antipsychotic prescription was also more pronounced in females than in males. Overall, this is an excellent, well-done study. As the authors note, the data examined was available through September 2020, so they were not able to examine changes throughout the pandemic and its aftermath. They also were not able to compare and contrast patients with one psychotropic prescription and those receiving more than one psychotropic prescription. Nonetheless, this doesn't detract from a well-done and informative study for those of us in the trenches treating children and adolescents in the pandemic's aftermath. And I want to emphasize that I believe we're likely to experience an even greater wave as the pandemic hopefully continues to recede. I liken this to the PTSD we see in veterans in combat. Many are able to focus on the task at hand and hold it all together during the acute stress and trauma, but when they return to quote-unquote normal civilian life, they can experience significant and debilitating PTSD and other symptoms. I suspect that we may be in for a similar wave of psychopathology in school-age children, perhaps also their parents, as we leave the once new but now old normal of the pandemic and go into another new normal of the pandemic's aftermath. Those of us working with school-age children are likely to be increasingly busy in the months and years ahead.